the days I do coffee talk videos are definitely my most energetic, like spastic days because I just drink so much coffee because I drink coffee in the morning anyways. I'm gonna show you how I make a matcha because I think I have figured it out. weather outside it's a beautiful spring day and looking back on my journey through recovery from an eating disorder I am coming upon a year in recovery this end of May and I really wanted to make a special video about this promoting getting help and deciding to enter recovery this past year has truly been one of the most self enlightening years of my life and I really wanted to promote this recovery this big step and this big chapter to anyone who is struggling whether that is an eating disorder whether that is mental illness whether that is any sort of behavior that is causing you distress in your life whether that's a toxic friendship, whether that is a anxious, anxiety-provoking situation that you are constantly in, whether you are unhappy in a state of unhappiness. I wanted to promote this time, this beginning, this new chapter in your life where you are able to realize your worth and your happiness and do what you can to get there. Recovery has been the hardest, but also most rewarding and most amazing year of my life um it is so very true and i just wanted to give you guys reasons my personal reasons and your own reasons that every person can find to decide to take charge and take hold of their life and understand that they deserve the best that they deserve coming into this world respect happiness love freedom amazing feelings and sensations, the most pleasurable things that this earth can give us and no person deserves that more or less than another. So here we are, you just saw me make my matcha. This is probably going to be one of my favorite coffee chats that we have just because I really want to promote people taking charge and understanding what they deserve. and. It's always a journey learning and trying to figure out what you deserve and trying to figure out what's best for you because we all come from different places. We all come from different homes, different home lives. People have endured different things than the person sitting next to them. So let's have a conversation about this and I hope that you leave this feeling inspired, empowered, and I hope that you are able to acknowledge the power you hold within yourself to rise above whatever you feel you are a victim of. All of us can lead really wonderful, impactful, happy lives full of love and care for ourselves and for others. And I brought these flowers out to accompany us because I just like the feeling that they give me. Um, eventually, when I became a teenager, I really learned the true power of being a woman and I felt so empowered in being a woman. So I began to construct an idea of my mind of the woman I wanted to be and the things I wanted to do with my life and that kind of helped guide me um, each day in decisions that I made and you know, is this the woman that I want to be? Is this respectful? Is this kind of me? Is this a woman that I would be proud of? looking back in the future um you know would future me be proud of the decisions and things that i'm doing right now and that was a very large reason why i decided to go into recovery i was not being a good role model for my um, niece that was going to be born soon i was not being a good role model for my friends at the time i was modeling and so when i entered recovery i was um modeling and 
I didn't want to be another person in that industry where eyes are on that was unhealthy and was not promoting a healthy love filled image to younger women. My anorexia really was contradicting that core value belief that I had within myself. Another reason why I went into recovery was because I have the most amazing nephews and now a niece and I remember I was in the midst of my eating disorder and as you know children are very enthusiastic they are full of energy and I was having a hard time keeping up with them and keeping up with what they wanted to do and that was really hurtful for me because that was my own fault it was my doing of not feeding myself therefore I was not able to run and uh, play with them and be in the moment and be present and give them my full attention which they deserved and then, you know younger kids they are very honest they will say what's on their mind he said to me he said auntie Shay you are too thin you are too thin although that eating disorder part of me could have been very happy and in the past was very happy when people remarked on my thinness or remarked on me being unhealthily thin this time that was very hurtful in the fact that it was true i wanted to be present for their lives and i wanted to give them the attention that they deserve and my life the attention that it deserved because i was not living at all i was a zombie i was not feeding myself i was not feeling emotions any emotions i was feeling was agitation and frustration and i was easily ticked off at any little thing i was not happy and i was not giving my all to the ones the people and the things that i truly truly love a lot and so i think anyone can relate to that we all have things that we love whether it's our dog whether it's painting an activity whether it's a person um, family or a friend or even just living even just experiencing life even being able to go for a hike or a walk or being able to sit outside there are things that cause us joy happiness and pleasure in our life and depriving ourselves of food causing us to wither away is not living our life food is not the enemy and I soon became able to realize that and so a big reason for me to go into recovery as well was i wanted to be there to see my nephews and my now niece who i just adore grow up and i wanted to be able to be a good role model for them and i think anyone can relate to wanting to be a good role model whether that's for their future child whether that's for their younger sister or cousin or anyone like that even a friend take a good look at what you have around you no one's life is perfect and i know that many people can struggle with you know familial relationships and relationships with their parents or their brothers and sisters you know life is not perfect and everyone endures their own battles and I have had my share personally so I totally understand that it is very hard in many instances to look on the brighter side but I urge you in this time to really think about giving yourself and your body what it is asking for opens up doors to many many beautiful things such as being able to enjoy a conversation a movie being able to put all of your thought into learning about something and broadening your intelligence being able to smell flowers beautiful flowers being able to accomplish that dream or that goal that you have in your life starving yourself of food or from love or from care or from what you need as a person is not going to get you to those happy beautiful moments in your life i look to instagram also for some responses and a lot of people said that they were just really tired of hating themselves it is definitely tiring i've actually reached that point a couple of times 
even in my recovery. And I think a lot of people who struggle with mental illness or a toxic relationship, there is a time, a glimpse of time where you do think, I am so tired of this. There are moments where you do feel, I think most people will acknowledge that I am so tired of this, you know? How can I keep going on with this? And these racing thoughts are tiring. I am tired of not having any energy and I am tired of feeling like I'm going to faint whenever I stand up. I am tired of this. I am tired. Life is more than this. Once you realize that, I can't tell you. In recovery, I have learned to love my body and that is insane. Insane. And accepting my body for the way it is was my worst fear ever over anything. My worst fear was accepting my body because I felt like accepting it was failure, was a way of failure because success was control and success was looking a certain way. But really, success is loving who you are on the inside and the outside and loving your quirks and the way you were brought into this world because there is a whole billion dollar industry that makes money off of us feeling like the way we come into the world is not enough. Realizing that was also a huge eye opener. This woman sitting in this chair today, and it's so weird to refer myself as a woman because I feel like I am still just a six year old sometimes. I am happy to say that I love my body the way it is. I accept myself. I can live my days having energy. I go for walks with my dog. I don't pressure myself to exercise. I haven't exercised in however long and I am so happy. My body is healthy and doing what it needs to do. I can run with my nephews. I can play with my niece. I can hold my niece who is like 16, 18 pounds for however long um, without you know, feeling so weak. I mean, come on, like I am not a mother. I'm not used to carrying a child in my arms. Like my arms will burn, but otherwise I can enjoy these things. I can jump on the trampoline with my nephews. I can watch a movie and be engaged. I have very complex thoughts within myself and I think about things that are happening around the world. I can eat food that I want. I have chocolate every night and it's great. And there's nothing wrong with that. And if there's a part of your head that when I just said that, if there's a part of you that judged me for that, I understand because I would do that to myself and I would do that to other people and think, how could they do that? How could they do that? Listen, I realized that I can give so much more to people than just looking a certain way. And I also have more control over things in my life than just food. I have control over how I react to a situation. I have control with what I do every day. I don't have to do anything I don't want to do. If someone asks me to hang out and I would just rather stay home, I say no. That is a form of control. There is control in everything you do, in every word you say, find control in that rather than depriving your body of something that it needs. Another big thing for me was that I also want to have children. I also want to have a baby someday and I want that baby to live in a healthy body and restricting my body from food for many countless years does have effects on your hormones and on your fertility. Food is fuel and by eating will allow you to reach your goals and your dreams. And if your goals and your dreams are to appear a certain way or to have control in your life, really examine that and think about where you can incorporate control, incorporate, sorry, incorporate control into your life that is not detrimental to your body. And if you are trying to look a certain way and if you are trying to be accepted by society, really look into other valuable parts of yourself in ways that you can contribute rather than your body. Think about your mind, think about things you can study. If we look back on history, no one makes change in this world by just appearing a certain way. They make change through what they have to say and through their knowledge, intelligence, and creating something new and empowering people. 
beauty has no limits and beauty has no size at all. Practicing that every single day is what will overall lead you to that happiness and that success and that love for yourself. It's not, okay, after watching this video, I am gonna love myself now. It's a practice every single day. Every single day I listen to podcasts, which I will let you know at the end of this video, my suggestions and my podcasts that I love to listen to that truly help with this self-love liberation journey for what you deserve. I have to do it every single day. I have to feed myself every single day, consciously feed myself what I need, and I consciously have to make these decisions and eventually they are going to become my life and part of my life. I hear you. For anyone who is struggling right now during quarantine, please reach out, reach out to me, reach out to someone. Know that you do not have to look a certain way, that your body always deserves food, you don't need to earn food, you always earn and deserve food. And know that quarantine is just short-lived. I can't tell you how many doors recovery has opened for me. It's countless. I love my body. I am a better friend. I am a better aunt. I am a better daughter. I'm a better person. And I love my life. I love food. And that is a scary thing for me to say. And even now it's a little hard for me to say because that was kind of a triggering thing for me. Um, and I still work every single day within my recovery. Again, self-love and recovery is a process. It's not linear. There will be ups and downs and daily practices. And it is the most rewarding thing I have ever, ever done. Let's support each other. Let's support women. We're in this together. We experience very similar things whether we want to acknowledge it or not. And you are not only your body you are so much so much more than that please feed yourself please listen to podcasts every day it truly has helped me i listen to kate noel's take the cake podcast which i'll link below i follow models that eat i watch their youtube channels i also really love to listen to nadine leopold's um i choose me podcast that is wonderful that talks about eating disorders and just choosing yourself and choosing to live a wonderful life that you deserve i also watch rebecca lung on youtube and this is her anna luisa partnered necklace for anorexia recovery i wear this every day and it's a small reminder to keep fighting and so little reminders like this whether it's sticky notes whether it's jewelry clothing podcasts Please remind yourself every day of what you deserve because you deserve so, so much. Thank you guys so much for sitting down chatting with me. I am going to have some very, very exciting videos coming up of some amazing women-owned brands that support all body sizes, all love to everyone and every body size and shape, and I am super, super excited. So make sure you're subscribed because I honestly have some really, really exciting things coming up. I'm super, super pumped. So thank you guys for sitting down with me again today. Leave a comment below on other coffee chats that you'd like to see, what else we should talk about. Make sure you're subscribed because I hope this truly, truly, truly helped someone. So I'll see you guys in another video. I also wanna say that my use of the word guys doesn't refer to like just men. I just kind of do that as, um, I say that meaning everyone and I know that that is a controversial word and I have been trying my best to not use that word guys as referring to everyone because that word does have sexual and gender connotations um, and expectations with that word. So I just want to clarify that I am aware of that and I have been trying my best to refrain from that word. Sometimes it slips out, but if I do mean that, I just refer to everyone, a community, a group of love, and everyone no matter what their gender or sexual identification. I love you all. I'll see you very, very soon.